Good morning, YouTube. This is uh, Dan Clark coming to you again from Austin, Texas. Um, I got my friends here helping me today. This is Buzz. And then that is Lily. So, he's in the video. Uh, just working from home. So, uh, I figured I'd come outside for a little bit. The weather broke a little. Um, so I figured I'd come here and uh, I'll get rid of the food, but uh, staying on track. Kale and onions for lunch. Um, I had a protein shake about an hour ago, so uh, I know kale's good on the liver. It's like a scrub brush to the liver. So anyway, <clears throat> uh, back on topic. Um, trained yesterday. I did get that video up. I apologize for being like, you know, this big on the screen. Um, recorded it on my iPhone. Um, managed to plug it into iMovie and kind of self-taught myself a way to at least get something up. Um, so I hope that it, it helped somebody or explained a little bit. But uh, I can see the spots that we're missing and the spots I want to add some stuff in. So anyway, um, that being said, the focus on today's video, I am going to talk about training. Uh, we're going to talk about reps, rep ranges, how many sets per body part, and a couple good examples of some splits that I have used in the past and then the split that I'm using now to train. Um, what I want to do in, in future videos is kind of break down, um, you know, each exercise is maybe some tutorials, some things like that. Um, and then, uh, <clears throat> again, go based off what I get for comments or what you, um, what you guys ask for. So, um, so training, um, <clears throat> we'll, we'll, we'll touch on the overtraining thing a little bit. So I train five days a week. Um, sometimes six, it just depends on the week, sometimes four, really, it, it just depends on how I'm doing, but bare minimum four, I won't ever go below that typically unless, uh, you know, something's come up traveling, whatever it might be, but I, I'd always do something. Um, <clears throat> so my, like I said, my normal is five days a week. Um, you talk about overtraining. I just don't work a muscle group when it's sore. It's that simple. If I'm not sore, I'll work it if I want to. Um, that's how I feel about overtraining. So kill it if you can. Um, if you do chest on Monday and your chest is lagging and on Wednesday it's not hurting anymore, it, you hit it. I, it's it's that simple for me. Um, if a muscle, you know, you go into the gym and you're breaking the muscle down, right? You're taking the muscle and you're you're, you're stretching that and you're putting micro tears into into that muscle into that muscle. Um, and as you're doing that, the soreness is from those micro tears um, in the fiber. So <clears throat> when you're outside of the gym, you know, your diet, your sleep, all of those things play into how well that rebuilds itself. And if I go in on Monday and put those tears in it and it hurts, and then I go in on Tuesday, I can only imagine how much more damage I'm doing, right? In help and causing myself to not grow, which is the goal. Um, it's the same way as if you, I mean, you skin your knee on the sidewalk, um, and then you go out and do something the next day once it's, you know, scabbed or healing up and, um, you go and hit it again and reopen it. I mean, it's just not going to heal. So, um, again, that, that's how I look at overtraining. So you work it if you can, <laughs> right? Um, so my split right now, I am arm dominant. Um, I had the, like your typical bro, right? I, I hated leg day, never did legs, not never, but very rarely did legs, um, and love doing arms like most people do. Um, so, um, <clears throat> that being said, um, uh, being arm dominant, I don't like to isolate a whole lot of them. Um, I work those muscle groups in, um, on the day that I'm already working a, another body part where they're being used. So for example, um, we'll say Monday is chest and triceps. Tuesday legs, Wednesday back and biceps, Thursday shoulders, and then Friday is kind of the, the free-for-all day for me. Um, so that broken down a little bit. Um, so chest and triceps, right? When you're doing chest, um, all of your pressing movements, you're using a lot of secondary muscles. Uh, we'll take the bench press, bench press for instance, um, as you're pressing, right? You have a lot of shoulder. Um, and you have a lot of triceps and blue and other. I mean, there's other things. You got your back, your core, um, and on some movements, even a little bit of legs. You know, the bench press or whatever. But um, anyway, so as I'm doing chest, all of my pressing movements, whether it be an incline or a decline or a flat, um, <clears throat> doing that, my triceps are getting a lot of work. Um, so by the time I get done doing chest, um, they call it being pre-exhausted. Um, so that muscle's got a lot of blood moving through it, and it's already gotten a lot of heavy work from working chest. Um, so it's not hard for me to burn that muscle out, um, you know, with a quick five or six sets at the end of my workout and get a good pump. 
um, and call that good. <clears throat> um, so my arm is very uh, blocky because I have some extra weight on myself, but again, never focused on um, that real good pump, just you know, a heavy, hard weight all the time, um, which will give you the, the power lift look rather than bodybuilder look. And for me, I, I mean, we all want to look good, right? So um, that's the way I approach that. Now, set. Um, I think 12, 12, to, 12 to 16 sets, we'll call it, per body part is what's good for me. Um, again, the smaller muscle groups, the ones that are dominant for me, I like to keep it down, you know, to maybe like four to six, six to eight sets. Um, so that chest and triceps day that I'm talking about, I'll do a good solid 12 to 14 sets for chest. And then, you know, maybe six sets for, for triceps, let's say, bringing me to a total of 20 sets, which um, you should be able to finish in about an hour. Maybe an hour and 15, depending upon your, your pace or your width or your cardio. Um, 60 seconds in between sets for me is good. So you blast it, you kill it. Take 60 seconds, get a sip of water, go hit it again. Um, the good gauge is if you're new, um, the pump is a new feeling. And the feeling for me that didn't come right off the bat, probably my style of training didn't help. Um, but once you start to get the pump, the whole idea is you want to keep that pump because you're keeping nutrients flowing into that muscle. Um, so use that as your gauge. Don't lose that pump. Um, <clears throat> so we'll do the chest and triceps day to break that down really easy. Your chest, you know, you got three areas of your chest. So you got your upper, you got your middle, and you got your lower chest. Um, so the way to address those areas of your chest would be some incline, some flat, and some decline. I like to break up uh, barbell and dumbbell work and cable and machines and all my workouts. Um, it's BS if, if you say that machines are for, uh, for girls or they don't put on muscle. That's a crock. You guys don't believe that crap. Um, I do believe that there is a place for your heavy compound movements and free weights, um, but please mix in cables and machines. They are necessary and they work. Um, they work really, really well and they're naturally easier on the joints and things like that. So um, it's just about how you use them like anything, right? So um, what I'll do, typical chest workout for me, uh, let's say you go on, most guys like to bench and want their bench to go up, so we'll use that uh, flat bench. A good 10 to 15 minute warm up um, in there into the gym is good. So you maybe 10 minutes, just a very slow walk on the incline, get the blood moving, get your wind up a little bit, and then some good stretches in the chest and upper, and just hit everything from the waist up for your stretches, um, and get ready to get in there and kill it. Right. So now you got your music up, your pre workouts kicked in. Um, it's time to get in there and kill the bench. So heavy compound movements, um, working your way up. You know you don't go in and. and warm up with the bar and then throw two and a quarter on and just go for it. Um, you want to work your way up in weight. So uh, when I say working sets, they are not including any warm ups. Um, so we'll say that you're going to want to do four, four sets on the bench press, right? In bodybuilder style, guys, we're coming down nice and slow, pausing, just, just shy of hitting the chest, no resting on the chest because that means your muscles aren't doing anything, right? Uh, time under tension is a big deal. And Again, I'll dig into more of that stuff later on, but um, come down nice and controlled motion, pause and push, and then back down. And uh, for me, I like to keep a rhythm as I'm working out, right? Um, it's keeping that, that chest under tension the whole time, um, and I'm really getting to focus and squeeze and contract on that on that area that I'm working. Um, we're using chest, for example, on this one, right? So four sets of that bench press, we'll say uh, you're working from 14 reps to 12 reps to 10 reps to eight reps. You can go 12, 10, 8, 6 even on the bench press, I think, because it's such a compound movement. Don't go any lower than 6 reps, so we're going to start trudging into some, some powerlifting territory. These are hypertrophy workouts. Um, again, bodybuilding style is my style. It's what I know best, so that's what I'll stick with. <clears throat> now we've done our flat. I'll go incline dumbbells, right, because I just use my barbell for bench press. So I'll go dumbbells, right, a different hold on the muscle, a completely different pull, addressing my upper chest, let's say three sets. 12, 10, 8. That's a good example for that. Declines, dealer's choice, right? You just used a barbell. You just used a set of dumbbells. Flies, chances are you're going to be on a machine with your hands fixed. So let's say you say dumbbells again. We go decline, grab the dumbbells, rep them out. Um, we'll get into hand positioning and all that type of stuff if you guys need to look it up. Seth Ferrosi is really a, a good resource. He talks about hand positioning and holding and how much that can affect where you're training on the muscle. Um, it, it's a lot of detail for a video like this for right now. So... Now you've done a total of, you know, your four on your flat, your three on your incline, and let's say your three on your decline. So you're at a total of 10 sets um, for the day right now. My chest is pretty spent. I'll go do some high rep cable flies or machine flies, uh, you know, 20 reps on that, let's say. 
Um, so now you're at 12 to 14 sets. Triceps, you move into um, one of my favorite motions is um, grab the cable machine, put the cable pulley all the way down at the bottom, hands behind your head and up and extending like this. It's one of my favorite movements for, for triceps. I just feel it. Um, but pick your favorite ones, YouTube them, Google them, look up what works for you guys, feel it. Ignore what anybody has to say. If you feel it in your tricep and it burns and it works, do it. Um, it's that simple. Whatever anybody has to say is their own opinion just like mine. So uh, doing their own goal works for you, right? Um, again, you'll want to adjust your tricep equally. Um, you have a front head, you have a medial head, and you have a rear head of your tricep. Um, and I'll dig in that in the more videos. I'm running a little bit short on time. So... Um, I will dig into more of an explanation on that later. But <clears throat> um, that being said, so we're, we're talking about um, your training split and how you want to train. So now I've done chest and triceps, right? Uh, Tuesday I go and hit legs because I'm, I'm fresh, right? All I've done is my chest and my triceps. My core might have got a little work from the, from the heavy compound there on bench, but uh, certainly not enough to shy me away from doing legs. Um, get in there, kill legs, same thing. We're going to use 12 sets. Um, you know, maybe 16 for legs. It's a bigger muscle group. So maybe we're going to do 16 sets, uh, maybe even 20 because you got calves in there. Um, and I'll detail out those workouts later too. Once you can go in and do back and biceps, um, again, relatively easy. You can isolate that small body part um, after doing back and, and just absolutely fry it. Thursday, I do shoulders by themselves. I'm naturally uh, narrow shoulders. Um, and they had a pretty good slope to them. I was a skinny kid, uh, chubby to skinny to in the gym and now chubby again. But um, anyway, I, I like to isolate those. That's just a personal thing for me. Um, the more I can widen myself out, the more narrow my waist looks, the bigger I look to give that, that illusion or that look. So uh, that's what I shoot for with isolating shoulders by themselves. And when I say Fridays are free for all day, guys, uh, my gym, I, it's a relatively like hardcore gym, you know, uh, it's in Texas, we got no AC, the equipments, uh, the pads are pretty well worn out and toasted, but um, I know a lot of the gyms that people go to and I went to for a long time are like a gold gym, uh, 24, lifetime, whatever it is, and there's a ton of equipment in those gyms and some really cool stuff. Um, so Friday I go in pretty open-minded. If you have a lagging body part, that would be the time to work it, um, whether that be you're trying to get your chest up or you're trying to get your, your arms up or whatever it is. That would be the time to go in there and play around, get a good pump, uh, throw some cardio in there, have some fun. Right, That's, that's my fun day, but um, I still go in there with the same attitude of kill it. Um, it's not just go in there and, and you know dance around and do cartwheels and text. Um, it is still business when I'm in there for that hour, but um, experiment. Right, just just kind of find your niche, find what exercises work for you in there, um, and then you can use that day as needed. Typically, I will take weekends off just to spend some time with the fam, um, get out with the dogs, and do all that stuff after the work week and after going to the gym. Um, but you know, sometimes we'll feel like going on a Saturday or Sunday, so that's what we do. Um, that's how I take an approach to training. Again, um, if you're coming into a bodybuilding show or something like that, I can definitely help with that. If you leave a comment or a message or however YouTube does it, um, then that is definitely something that uh, I can help with. Um, but again, this is this is me, uh, constant life, right? This is um, not with a goal at this point to step on stage. Um, this is just training for life and having fun and putting on some muscle and looking good. And that's the goal, guys. You want to feel good. Um, you wake up, you feel good, you, all of those things that plays into the rest of your day. Um, I know when I start dropping a little bit of weight and I start seeing an extra vein or an extra striation or something that <clears throat> I haven't seen in forever, it motivates the shit out of me to get in there and keep killing it. Um, so that's the goal. We want to feel good. We want to be ready for anything that comes at us. Um, we'll dig into a little bit more of the hardcore stuff um, as time goes, but I just kind of want to give um, a little bit of my knowledge out there and kind of I guess classify myself or um, I can't think of the word off the top of my head qualify myself there you go um, as somebody who can you know offer this up so anyway guys I'll wrap it up on this one please 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 comment and let me know what you want otherwise I'm just winging it and giving you what I think I uh, should put out there so anyway guys get in there kill it today if you have any questions or anything that you need from me please let me know I'm here to help all right guys have a good one